In this video, we are going to start talking about a little bit of statistics, um, but we'll kind of start that by um, just looking at some bar graphs, line graphs, um, circle pie charts, and just making sure we're we're okay and comfortable pulling information off of it. Okay, so um, so we start with a pie chart, and remember that a pie chart that this this picture represents the whole chunk of information. All right, so uh, it does either they're going to give you that information um where there's costs associated to um we are distributed let me just read the thing there's a distribution of a wholesale price of a color tv okay so in that 425 dollar tv here are how all the costs and the profit and stuff like that are are uh, broken out so um so we're going to answer a couple questions out of it but if they're asking anything related to the price then it's going to be out of 425 dollars so We'll start with what percent of the wholesale price um, of the wholesale price, right, is the cost of labor. So if we look at cost of labor, cost of labor is 130. So then it's 130 out of the total wholesale price. Wholesale price is $425, which is all of this added together. So anytime we're looking for a percent, we need a part out, part, part out of whole, and 130 is the part out of 425. So we will throw that in the calculator. So we have 130 divided by 425 gets us 30.6, we'll call that. Um, well, 0.3059. We'll make that eight, it's gonna bump that eight up. All right, so that is the decimal version. If we move our decimal over two spots to the right, either we're multiplying by 100, or we're just comfortable multiplying, moving the decimal over. And that equates to 30.59%. And then I don't know what the decimal or I don't know what the directions say, but let's say it says round to the nearest tenth. So if it's going to round us to the nearest tenth, we are rounding to here. And so that is 30.6%. Okay, so about 30% of the cost of that TV is the labor to put the TV together. All right, uh, what percent of the wholesale price uh, the cost is materials? Same stuff, so 125 out of 425. So if we throw that in the calculator, that would give us 0 0.2941. We take this one divided by this one. Calculator is gonna give us something like that. Um, and then same thing, I'm gonna bump the decimal two spots to the right, so this way. So then that's gonna be 29.41%. And it's same thing if we round to the nearest 10, the one doesn't do anything to the four this time. So 29.4%. So almost the same percentage is for uh, the cost of materials. Okay, because here's our cost of materials. All right, and then last one of these, what would be the wholesale price? Uh, what would the wholesale price be if no tariff? Okay, so it's coming um, from another country, and so there's a tariff associated with it. Um, so if we cut that out, we are looking at taking our $425 TV, and we are subtracting $40 from it. So the price of the TV would be $385. Assuming that nothing else would change on it, you know, like the profit or anything else would change. Um, but it, then most likely it would change that if it was um, not imported, then potentially some of these other things might be more expensive, or at least lower, like who knows. Okay, so uh, so pie chart um, is always kind of something out of something. Those are usually pretty nice um, and very straightforward types of graphs. So if we're looking at a bar graph, bar graph is um just you're looking at a bunch of bars and um you kind of if you were to take the whole thing that would be um uh, bar graph is usually pretty it's something different than a pie chart pie charts are, these are pieces of one thing um these have a tendency to not be pieces of one thing they're just kind of information over time um, at least in our situation so for ours is we're talking about a company is producing oil and the bar graph is representing 100 million barrels. 
So if you're at five, then that represents 500 million barrels. And these are the years associated with it. So um, how many hundred million barrels of oil did the company produce in 2014? So we're looking at 2014, we're looking at this, and if we drop that down, we're looking at about four. So that means about 400 million. Okay. Let me add in. There it is. Okay. So my other two questions are we'll have to go back and forth here. It says judging on the graph, um, should company oil production in 2019 be more or less than it was in 2017? So that is a pattern. Do we have a pattern that seems to be developing? Yeah. Each year they seem to be producing more and more oil. So if we jump to 2019, then yeah, the pattern continued, it would be more than it was in 2017. So sure, that's what the pattern implies. That's not a guarantee, but um, that's what the pattern predicts. All right, and then we'll do one last with this. How many more 100 million barrels of oil are, and remember that they said how many? more 100 million. So whatever we do, if we do some number minus some number, whatever that is, we're going to have to say that it's that in 100 million barrels um, of oil are indicated for the company in 2018, then in 2014. So 2018. Um, 2018 is right here. So that would be a 5.75 is what we I would be taking a guess at. And then my other number was 2014. So 2014, if I brought that back down, we're sitting here. So we're taking, we want the difference between them because this one made more. So they wanna know how much more um, was produced. And so we are gonna find the difference between them. So we're taking, um, let's see, 2014, we had 400. In 2018, we had 575, so we're finding the difference. 575 minus 400 is going to equal, and we're, I'm already putting it in 100 million. Um, if I wasn't doing that, then I would be having it as 4 and 5.75. I just thought it would be easier if we just put it already in the 100 millions. So, um, so that's going to get us 175. And 175 is 175 million more barrels. Okay. All right. And then the last couple of questions are kind of a line chart. So what this is, is um, a patient's a graphic temperature chart. So they came in and they had a little over 102 temperature. And then they were at a hospital getting meds perhaps, and um, their temperature is overall decreasing. So things are looking better to more of a normal temperature range. Okay, so that's kind of what we got going on. We have these time increments of when their temperature was taken and they can kind of compare that and see how they're doing. So um, it says on what date and time, uh, on what date and time of day did the patient's temperature first drop to within 0.2 degrees of normal, right? So 0.2 degrees is, let's see, we are, so here's the um, April 10th, April 11th. So there, which basically means we are looking at really, really close to um, 98.6. So 98.6 and here's 99. So we gotta find a figure out what are each of these little increments you're representing. So if this is 99 and this is 100, that difference between the two is one. So each one of these is like a 0.2 because it's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then one. So each little dot is 0.2. So when is it that we were um, 0.2? Not coincidentally that that's exactly what they asked for. So basically a dot away from normal. So that is roughly where we were right there. So that was, 4 a.m. on April 11th. So about 4 a.m. Uh, April 11th. All right. 
And then last couple questions on what post op period. So something happened where um, they came in and there was some sort of an operation. And so post op is starting at that time. At what post op time did the patient's temperature remain within 0.2 of normal? So when did it level off basically? And so it kind of fluctuates around 0.2 of it. So that's perfect. So that's normal. So from, from, um, uh, let's go April 11th at 4 a.m. to um, when they were discharged potentially. So April 12th at noon. And then we'll do 412 at Tokyo. So I'm sure that there's some stipulation that you'd have to hold a temperature for a period of time, uh, kind of a normalized temperature for a period of time, and then you're okay to be released. And so they must have met that <coughs> requirement and they are good to go. All right, and then last one. All right, what was the highest temperature recorded on the patient? <coughs> so highest recorded temperature was a little over the 1.2, but uh, 102, but remember that each increment is a 0.2. So that person reached a temperature of 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, um, and then I know they didn't ask for this, but just in case, uh, they write down all the information at 12 a.m. on April 10th. So, at 12 a.m. Okay. All right. And so that was some examples of some line graphs, some bar graphs, and some pie charts.